Three men were wounded Friday night in a shooting in the East Garfield Park neighborhood. The men were sitting in two separate cars in the 3400 block of West Ohio Street when a white Nissan SUV approached and multiple people inside fired a barrage of shots at the two cars. In the first vehicle, an 18-year-old was shot in his thigh and butt, and another 18-year-old was shot in his thigh, and a 22-year-old in the other car was hit in his wrist. They were all listed in good condition. There were at least 70 shots fired in this one incident. One of the cars showed up at Norwegian Hospital riddled with bullet holes. Area North detectives are investigating and the shooters are still at large. Chicago police, the ATF and the FBI have been very busy here in Chicago taking down the gangs. And today we're gonna take a look at what they've been up to and what's been accomplished here in Chicago. People ask all the time, what are the cops in Chicago up to? What are they doing to stop crime? Let's take a look. The Hobos Gang was organized in early 2004. The name Hobos comes from the destruction of the Robert Taylor homes. They were left without a home, and this is how they came up with the name Hobos. In early 2004, two of Chicago's biggest gangs, the Gangster Disciples and the Black Disciples, which were rivals for decades, these factions of both gangs joined forces and became the Hobos. The Hobos ruled by fear, terrorizing the south side of Chicago from 2004 through 2013. The Hobos had a narcotics empire that made large amounts of cash, selling cocaine, crack, heroin, in the low end of the south side. In their bid for drug turf over the years, the Hobos had numerous violent disputes with other gang factions, like the Fifth Ward Black Disciples, the Newtown Black Disciples, the Gutterville Mickey Cobras, and the Row Row Gangster Disciples. The gang also carried out robberies, home invasions of drug dealers, and other well-off targets across the city. The Hobos were by far one of the most sophisticated gangs. They monitored police radios, did what was called homework when planning murders. The Hobos were an elite killing team that used high-powered weapons throughout the South Side neighborhoods. What made the Hobos different than most Chicago gangs was, they scrapped the traditional gang rivalries and welcomed others from rival gangs to consolidate their power and expand their turf. Chicago police gang investigators, in close partnership with the FBI, IRS, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, launched a five-year investigation, including an 18-month grand jury. The feds ended the hobos' reign of terror in 2013 when they indicted the leadership of the hobos, starting with their leader, Gregory Chester. He survived being shot 16 times outside his girlfriend's apartment in 2007. He is known on the streets as Bowlegs, Big Homie, and Pops along with his top hitter, Paris Poe, a.k.a. Polarowski. Seven other high-ranking hobos were charged and convicted in the federal RICO case. Combined, the hobos' leadership were convicted in 2017 of eight murders. Two of the eight murdered were informants. One was a federal informant and one was a CPD informant. And there were also 16 attempted murders they were involved in over a span of a decade. No gang has been charged in a federal indictment with this level of violence since the El Rukins two decades ago. 
it takes a long time to do a RICO investigation. Anywhere from one to three years, and that's if they're lucky. That's if they get breaks and end up with witnesses and everything falls in place. But it's tough going after these big street gangs and dangerous too. On Monday afternoon here in Chicago, four people were killed, including a Chicago police officer, an ER doctor, and a pharmaceutical tech at Mercy Hospital in the Bronzeville neighborhood. The gunman, 32-year-old Juan Lopez, showed up at the hospital and started to argue with his ex-fiancee, ER doctor, Tamara O'Neill, about an engagement ring she said she didn't have. Weeks earlier, she broke off her engagement with Lopez. While in the parking lot with him, he got irate, so she called 911 on him. That's why the cops showed up at the hospital. As she started to run away from him, he came from behind a van, pulled out a gun, shoots her, turns, reloads, and fires two more shots at her while laying moaning and bleeding on the ground. That's when he ran into the hospital and encountered two women getting off an elevator. He shot and killed one of the women, 25-year-old pharmacy resident, Dr. Dana Less. After killing Less, the shooter then ran back out into the parking lot and started firing on arriving Chicago police squads while they were trying to shield the doctor's body lying in the parking lot from him. He then ran back into the hospital and that's when Chicago police officer Samuel Jimenez and his partner gave chase into the hospital. And during that time, he shot and killed Officer Jimenez. That's when a SWAT officer engaged him down a hallway and the suspect was shot twice and killed. Another officer was shot in his holstered gun. The gun saved him from being shot. He was very lucky. After it was all over, three innocent people were savagely gunned down by a madman. Officer Jimenez leaves behind a wife and three small kids. I would like to send my condolences to the Jimenez family. I haven't been out in the streets for about two weeks since Halloween. And over that two week period, 102 people were shot 20 were killed and 82 were wounded in shootings across the city. The Black Souls were formed in East Garfield Park at around Madison in California in 1962 by King Pee Wee. They eventually spread into the West Garfield Park neighborhood. Over the decades, the Souls have had many long-lasting alliances with gangs like the Gangster Disciples, the Four Corner Hustlers, the traveling vice lords, but they've been in a constant state of war with other gangs like the New Breeds and the Vice Lords. The Black Souls first appeared on Chicago Cops radar in the 1990s, but the heat came down in 2010 with the first massive dragnet on the gang by the CPD because an 18 year old was shot and killed by a 23-year-old reputed member of the Black Souls. And because of this, more than 60 people associated with the gang were arrested, and most were given lengthy prison sentences related to guns and drugs. The Black Souls have a half a dozen factions with more than 750 members. In 2013, the hammer came down when the Chicago police and the FBI indicted 23 Black Soul members in Operation 40 Caliber. The indictment was in connection to eight murders. They were also charged with racketeering conspiracy, drug and weapons charges. They controlled their $11 million year drug operation in West Garfield Park on the west side through a pattern of intimidation, through kidnappings, shootings, and murders dating back to the mid-1990s. The Black Souls were the first gang convicted under Cook County's use of the state RICO law 
that was passed in 2012. The cops claim this is a powerful tool to effectively combat the gangs. The statute is modeled after the federal racketeering law and allows state prosecutors to hold the bosses accountable for the actions of their entire gang. 17 members of the Black Souls pled guilty, but their leader and his lieutenants took their chances and were all convicted in December of 2017. The Souls leader, Cornell Dawson, was found guilty of four murders, racketeering, and drug conspiracy. Devon Spears executed a police informant in 2012. He was sentenced to life in prison. Taryn Odom, life in prison. Antoine Davis, life in prison. Clifton Lamont, life in prison. Ulysses Polk, life in prison. More than 100 witnesses testified during the two-month trial, including cops, gang members, and what really did them in was a lifelong drug dealer. He screwed them all by secretly recording hundreds of hours of conversations with the heresy of the Black Souls. About two miles south and three hours after the Mercy Hospital mass shooting, a fugitive was wounded in a police-involved shooting after the stabbing of a sheriff's deputy in the Bronzeville neighborhood Monday evening. About 6.35 p.m., Sheriff's deputies responded to the intersection of 41st and Michigan to arrest 22-year-old Javon Brewer because he didn't check in with the Cook County Sheriff Office's electronic monitoring program since November 7th. As the sheriffs tried to arrest Brewer on an escape charge, he then stabbed one of the deputies in the head. The deputy is expected to survive after being rushed to the University of Chicago Medical Center. Another deputy then shot and tasered Brewer. He was taken into custody and then taken to Stroger Hospital with a gunshot wound to his left arm. His injury is not life-threatening. Last I heard, the sheriff stabbed was stabilized. This Monday in Chicago just goes to show how dangerous it is for law enforcement on the bloody streets of Chicago. The Four Corner Hustlers were founded in 1968 by Walter Wheat and Freddie Gage in the West Garfield Park neighborhood. Some of the founding members were originally unknown vice lords and vice lords. There was a time when the Four Corner Hustlers actually stood for four corners of their hood. The word hustler stands for pledging allegiance to the almighty dollar. Over the past three decades, the gang's willingness to never back down has earned the Hustlers a reputation as the most feared and despised gang on the West Side. The Four Corner Hustlers stayed relatively small for about two decades. The change came in the 80s when the Hustlers started selling drugs. They started out by selling weed, then came the heroin, coke, and then crack and that's when every other gang on the west side became potential enemies due to competition over the turf and the money along with the drugs and the money came the guns and extreme violence their drug empire started in west garfield park and spread into humboldt park and the former leclerc courts projects on the south side in west garfield park the Hustlers' biggest rivals over the decades have been the Black Souls, the New Breeds, and the Gangster Disciples. Over the years, the leadership of the Four Corner Hustlers met violent deaths at the hands of members and rivals. These are just a few. After Hustlers founder Walter Wheat got out of prison, he didn't want the day-to-day -day control of the gang. So he gave control to his son-in-law, Angelo Roberts. Angelo wanted to expand the Hustlers and felt wheat was an impediment to his expansion plans. So in July 1994, 
Angelo Roberts plotted to kill Walter Wheat. Days later, Walter Wheat was sitting in a 1982 Oldsmobile Regency, waiting for his friends to come back out as they were in a clothing store on the 3800 block of West Chicago Avenue. As he sat there, a shirtless 17-year-old Bobby Cooley rode up on the car with a 9mm pistol and fired two shots into his back and the back of his head. The founder, leader, and longtime leader behind the leaders of the Four Corner Hustlers was killed by a split faction in his own gang. By September, Cooley was apprehended and charged. He is now serving a life sentence for the killing of Walter Wheat. After the killing of Walter Wheat, his son-in-law, Angelo Roberts, tried to take over the control of all the hustlers and all the gangs on the entire west side. So he attempted to buy high-powered weapons in what he thought was a deal with drug dealers. He also attempted to buy a Law's anti-tank rocket in exchange for cash and drugs. It turned out he was trying to buy all these weapons from ATF agents. Roberts wanted to use the Law's rocket to blow up the police headquarters on Harrison Street for revenge for interrupting his drug operations in the housing projects. On January 16, 1995, the CPD found the body of Roberts on the 7,000 block of South Vernon near the Park Manor Apartments in the Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood. He was found with his throat slashed in the back of a brown Chevy. No one has ever been caught in connection for this murder. Ray Washington was the leader of the Four Corner Hustlers street gang for a little over five years. He was cut down in a hail of gunfire along with a CHA inspector on the west side in 2009. His body was riddled with 25 bullets. The inspector survived. Reginald Royal and Lionel Roundtree were charged with the murder in the shooting of Washington. Royal and Roundtree are admitted members of the Unknown Vice Lords. When the shooting happened, cops heard the gunfire, responded to the scene, and saw Roundtree and Royal jump into a car and take off. The officers chased the vehicle and arrested both men. They retrieved the weapon used in the shooting. Roundtree and Royal were both sentenced to 80 years for this murder. In September of 2017, the feds announced a sweeping racketeering indictment against 11 members of the Four Corner Hustlers street gang, tying nine Four Corner Hustlers to a decades-long conspiracy that led to the murders of six people. Out of the 11 charged, Two were not charged in connection to the murders, only with extortion and conspiracy. The leader of the hustlers, Labar Broman Span, and ten hustlers have been charged and are now in custody awaiting trial. The alleged murders took place in 2000 and 2003. The victims included Latin King's boss Rudy Wrangle, a.k.a. Cato and five others. The indictment accuses Labar Span of participating in all six murders. Some of the defendants named in the indictment could face the death penalty. The feds say the Four Corner Hustlers spent decades committing a whole host of other crimes. Robberies, extortion, batteries, they allegedly dealt drugs, robbed rivals, used violence and intimidation to stop victims and witnesses from cooperating with the cops. The gang used police scanners to avoid detection and even outfitted its members with a security detail. The feds claim they allegedly conducted surveillance of their victims and used rental cars to cover their tracks. Span has previously been acquitted of Wrangell's murder and is already facing serious time in federal prison. He pled guilty in June to a federal weapons charge. Simmons and two others were convicted and were sent to prison in Wrangell's death. 
According to law enforcement, some details of the high-profile killing have changed. Authorities first claim the shooting of Latin King's boss Rudy Rangel resulted from an attempted jewelry robbery. But interviews and thousands of pages of records from the U.S. Attorney's Office suggest another possible motive. It is alleged that the murder was contracted after Rangel stole 150 kilos of cocaine. Rangel grew up in the Leclerc Court's projects on the south side. As a kid, he was friends with Pedro Flores and Margarito Flores, the twin brothers from Little Village, who grew up to be the biggest drug traffickers in the city before they got caught and agreed to help the Justice Department build the case that led to the arrest of Mexican drug kingpin El Chapo. Two Chicago police officers, Sergeant Xavier Elizondo and Officer David Salgado, have been accused and charged with stealing cash and drugs during searches after submitting false affidavits to judges to obtain warrants. Since their arrests on federal corruption charges, there's been a bunch of misconduct lawsuits involving these cops. Elizondo, who previously was assigned to a joint FBI Chicago Police Task Force, is charged with embezzlement and conspiracy to commit theft. Salgado is charged with lying to the FBI. Both officers were stripped of their police powers in January as federal authorities were investigating department members for allegedly ripping off drug dealers. Because of these two cops, this could end up being an ace in the hole for Span and the hustlers on trial. Prosecutors acknowledged they were reviewing hundreds of hours of wiretap recordings made during the investigation. Four of the five affidavits were submitted to get the taps in place, and they were given by none other than Sergeant Xavier Elizondo. The Hustlers trial is slated to start in September of 2019. Over the past two decades, the Four Corner Hustlers ranks have grown to over 18,000 members and they've expanded into the suburbs and two other states. Even today, many Four Corner Hustlers still pay homage to Angelo Roberts and King Walter Wheat. I have just been informed that the officer that was shot in the Mercy Hospital mass shooting has died at the University of Chicago. I'm sitting outside the University of Chicago awaiting the procession. CFD has set up the arch. The subject fired multiple shots at the officers before they could exit their squad car. The officers broadcast and police officer needs assistance. 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 10-1, 
And we have a man who took three lives in that hospital. So far, it's three. Who has no regard for the public, period. I think we need to readjust our priorities. But the question I have is, how do we defeat someone like that? That's the big question. The Gangster Disciples Street Gang was formed on the south side of Chicago in the 1960s by David Barksdale and Larry Hoover. By the late 1990s, the GDs were one of the top 10 largest gangs in Chicago. By the 2000s, gangs like the Gangster Disciples were spread out throughout the Chicagoland area when the housing projects came down and the violence was no longer confined. Gangs were now homeless and in some cases leaderless. This dramatic change left the GDs fractured and splintered into some 200 different sets operating on their own across the city. The Goonie Boss Gang is one of those factions. 11 ho homicides is, is, is unacceptable, no matter whether someone was a gang member or not. And so we'll, the people who are responsible for that, we'll bring them to justice. People of Chicago who worry about gun violence, they should know that it is a top priority of this administration. And it is why we eagerly uh, work in partnership with our federal partners and our CPD partners. The fact that the city of Chicago has 115,000 self-admitted street gang members absolutely represents a crisis. These men and their associates terrorized countless numbers of families and significantly contributed to the cycle of gun violence here in Chicago. Goonie members and their associates murdered and assaulted rivals, stole guns to arm themselves, violently prevented witnesses from cooperating with law enforcement. The feds announced a federal RICO indictment named Operation Lucky Seven. It implicates multiple members of a violent gang faction tied to nearly a dozen murders in Inglewood. At least 18 members of the Goonie Boss faction of the Gangster Disciples terrorized the Southside neighborhood. According to the federal indictment, about half of them, including the gang's leader, were allegedly responsible for the murders of 11 people between 2014 and 2016. The alleged boss, Romeo Blackman, also known as O-Dog, and eight of his associates of the Goonie Boss faction of the Gangster Disciples, are linked to 11 murders and a shitload of non-fatal shootings. Blackman alone is allegedly responsible for seven of those killings and five more attempted murders. These are the 11 killings they are accused of. Members of the gang are accused of killing Gerald Bumper on June 30th, 2016. Blackman is accused of killing Devon Horace on January 15th of 2016 on the 7200 block of South May Street. He is also accused of killing Andre Donner on December 13th of 2015 on the 7200 block of South May Street. Cook County prosecutors brought murder charges against DeMarco Bennett in connection with Donner's death last year, and he's being presently held without bond. Blackman is also accused of killing Williams on March 21st of 2014 on the 1200 block of West 70th Street, and is accused of killing Jonathan Johnson on January 22nd of 2014 on the 6900 block of South Racine Avenue. Blackman and Smith are accused of killing Crystal Jackson on November 19th of 2014 on the 6800 block of South Loomis Boulevard. The pair is also accused of killing Stanley Bobo on October 23rd, 2014 on the 1400 block of West 72nd Street. Blackman and McElroy are accused of killing Gerald Sias on May 26, 2016, 
inside a barber shop on the 1100 block of West 63rd Street. Another man, Travante Reed, appeared in Cook County Bond Court Friday on charges that he fatally shot Gerald Saez. This turn of events leaves one question. Do the feds now have a cooperating witness that is clearing up the confusion? Reed was already locked up on a reckless homicide charge for crashing a stolen minivan into a sport utility vehicle in Inglewood in December of 2015, killing a 37-year-old woman and injuring 12 others. Terman is accused of killing Ramal Hicks on June 20th, 2016, outside a store on the 1500 block of West 69th Street. And in August of 2017, Lamar Isaac was charged in the Hicks killing. He remains held at the Cook County Jail on $1 million bail. Sivels is accused of shooting 26-year-old David Easley while he was walking on the 7,000 block of South Carpenter Street on May of 2016. Easley of Evergreen Park was in the neighborhood just delivering a pair of shoes to his daughter when he was shot and killed. Cook County prosecutors said they believe Easley was mistaken for a member of the Cash Money Boys gang. They were at war with the Goonies at the time. The feds claim the Goonie gang was so brazen they bragged about the killing of Kenneth Whitaker on Facebook Live in July of 2016. Whitaker was the father of three. In May of 2017, Blackman and two others were federally charged with conspiring to steal guns from a gun shop in Streeter. Prosecutors say the three used a stolen Jeep to ram into the shop and steal 18 handguns, a rifle, and a shotgun. Nine other reputed Goonie Boss members are facing multiple federal weapons charges. The Goonie Boss gang put the fear of God in witnesses with threats and extreme violence to keep them from cooperating with the cops. The feds didn't disclose the motivation for the 11 murders, but the indictment against Blackman, Smith, Terman, and McElroy says the goals of the Goonie Boss faction were acquiring, preserving, protecting power, territory, operations, and proceeds for the enterprise through the use of extreme violence. The feds claim there are 11 murders and dozens of shootings connected to this gang. More charges are sure to come. It's now up to the prosecutors to prove their case against these individuals. Then we will see if there will be justice for these victims. A day after a Chicago police officer was shot and killed and a Cook County Sheriff's deputy was stabbed in the head, another cop was shot. He was shot in the back of his bulletproof vest. Now this incident started Tuesday morning during a routine traffic stop at 87th and Polina in the Grisham neighborhood. The driver immediately jumped out of the car and bolted and cops chased him. During the foot chase, the man turned and started firing on the cops, and almost simultaneously, they fired back. During the exchange of gunfire, the cop was struck in his bulletproof vest, and the suspect was shot in the upper body. The injured officer was taken to the little company of Mary Hospital in Evergreen Park, where his condition was stabilized. He is expected to make a full recovery. The suspect was taken in critical condition to Christ Hospital in Oak Lawn. It's truly been a tough week for the cops in Chicago. Maggio News signing off.